of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. This is always a great meeting to have um, our milestone dedications here with us tonight. So we have another full house, which we always love to see. I'll council let the role reflect that all council members are present and a quorum has been established. One of the highlights each year, as I said, was when we get to shake hands and present to these uh, service people that have worked for the city of Hastings for numerous years and um, tonight with that we have 330 years of service from these uh, single individual people by five years 10 years 15 20 25 30 and a 35 as well so I will at this point hand it over to Dan Watica and we will applaud for your awards and afterwards there will be photos taken so please stay for the photo afterward thank you Thank you. I am pleased to recognize the employees of the City of Hastings who have celebrated milestone anniversaries this year. We are fortunate to have their service and expertise on staff and are happy we could recognize some of them in person this year. Thank you to those, who are of, thank you to those of you attending. The following employees have been with the City of Hastings for five years this year, 2021. Nicole Beagle serves the department and city as a paid on call firefighter EMT. Bless you. Nikki represents the department in a professional and positive manner and she is very dedicated to the department. We thank her for her service and look forward to her future contributions. I don't believe Nikki is here today. Brady Endress has been a Parks Keeper 2 with the Park Maintenance Division since March of 2016. Brady is a valued team member at Parks and Recreation, always willing to tackle the most challenging projects as well as the menial tasks. His positive attitude, consistent work ethic, and laughter make working with him very enjoyable. Brady and his wife Claire recently welcomed their first child, Wayne, in early November. Congratulations. Brady has already begun to introduce his son to the outdoors and deer hunting. Is Brady here tonight? Officer Blake Nosel started with the Hastings Police Department on August 15, 2016 and served as a Hastings Police Reserve prior to his appointment. Blake is one of our field training officers and currently works the night watch in the patrol division. He is routinely recognized by his superiors for his excellent, innovative, and compassionate service to those in need. Come on up, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Corey Onkin has been our facility supervisor at the Hastings Civic Arena since September 2016. Corey has excelled in his position at the arena, tackling the routine day-to-day -day operations, tournaments, special events, ice maintenance, building maintenance, concessions, and so much more. Corey always has a positive attitude and is more than willing to make sure everyone at the arena has a great experience. Outside of work, Corey and his wife, Anne, enjoy spending time with their two daughters, Evelyn and Emily. Corey also enjoys playing slow pitch softball during the summer and fall, as well as working on his 1970 Plymouth Duster. Come on up. Jeremy Bickner is a paid on call firefighter EMT who has been very active in response to department activities. He is currently one of our ICE rescue instructors 
and brings a positive approach to the department. We thank him for his service and look forward to his future contributions. 10. Timothy Likes also is a paid on call firefighter EMT, active in response and department activities. He is one of our ICE rescue instructors and has been involved in department committees. Tim brings a positive approach to the department and we thank him for his service. Thank you. Phil Nelson, paid on call firefighter paramedic has been promoted to a full-time firefighter paramedic. He brings a very focused approach to his work and service to the community. Phil has been involved in committees, training, and maintenance of our equipment. Recently, he has been very involved in our truck committee and in modifying our current truck to improve, to improve our response. We thank him for his many contributions and look forward to his continued service to the community. Not here tonight. The following employees have been with the City of Hastings for 15 years. Connie Lang is an accountant in the Finance Department. Connie handles the important task of paying our bills as the accounts payable accountant. In addition to processing payments and setting up vendors in AP, Connie does numerous reconciliations, handles various insurance policies, and cash receipting. She also researches expenses as needed and often helps departments realign their expenses with their budgets. Prior to joining the city, Connie worked as an accountant for Northwest Airlines. She and her husband live in Hastings. Matthew Lindemann has the honors of becoming the first public works operator to complete all six steps of the public works operator program which makes him a valuable asset to the city. Matt is a well-rounded operator, but he excels with the city sanitary sewer system by taking on the role of line cleaning, televising, lift station maintenance, and flushing of the lines. Matt is also a good mentor of new employees by taking time to educate and answer questions that benefit the whole department. Matt is a hockey and baseball dad, which keeps him on the go year round. Commander Brian Showalter celebrated 15 years with the Hastings Police Department in April. Showalter began his career here as a patrol officer in 2006 and was assigned as an investigator on the Dakota County Drug Task Force in 2009 where he became a team leader. Showalter returned to the patrol division in 2014 and was promoted to patrol sergeant. In 2017, he was appointed to the rank of police commander and completed Northwestern School of Police Staff and Command. Brian is a taskmaster in, and an invaluable asset to our agency. He currently oversees our operations division. Congratulate, congratulations on your accomplishments and thank you. Mark Knoll also is a full-time firefighter paramedic who has served the department and community for 24 years with 15 of those in his full-time role. Mark has served in many roles during his time here including EMS training coordinator, instructor, FTO, mentor, and many more. He most recently served on our truck committee and manages our EKG monitors. He is very dedicated to serving the community and his fellow firefighters. We appreciate his dedication to serve. Craig Latch has served the fire department and community for 24 years as a firefighter and paramedic with 15 of those years in his full-time role. Craig has been active in many committees, including most recently our truck committee. He also represents the department on the Dakota County Special Operations Team, in which he serves as the chief. He also serves on the Minnesota Task Force One as a logistics manager. 
Craig is very dedicated to serving the department, our community, and the state, and we appreciate his service. Derek Latch is a full-time firefighter paramedic who has served on, on the department and community for 17 years, with 15 of those years in his full-time role. In addition to his firefighter paramedic role, he has been involved in the Safety and Wellness Committee and Fire Training Committee. He has performed safety checks in our department and managed, and managed the uniforms. Derek brings a calm, positive demeanor to our department and his shift. We appreciate his many contributions to the department. Denise DeWall, Building Services, marked 15 years with the city this summer. She is appreciated by her coworkers for being reliable, forthright, and productive. She is pleasant, fun, and funny to work with. Denise loves her family and is highly involved with her church. Last summer, she and her husband took a trip to the Boundary Waters, which achieved social distancing, but also proved to be a very po which also proved to be very popular since campsites were difficult to find. Thank you, Denise, for being such a dependable and hard worker. John Caven, assistant city engineer, is our utility man in the engineering department. He truly covers all areas of expertise and is a great resource for history and knowledge to all of us. John has a calm and patient temperament to handle any challenging situation that comes his way. He takes the lead on our pavement management program, stormwater management, MS4 permit, wellhead protection, building permit site reviews, and ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, compliance con contact for trail sidewalks and parking lots. John enjoys downhill skiing, and getting out in nature with his family, which includes wife Janet and four kids ages 10 and under. Is John here tonight? Nope. The following employees are celebrating two full decades. That's 20 years with the city. Officer Nathan Wood started his career with the Hastings Police Department on February 26, 2001. During his career, he has served as a patrol officer on the night watch, spent 11 years as an operator on South Metro SWAT, was a field training officer, and most recently completed a three-year assignment as an investigator on the Dakota County Drug Task Force. Nate is currently assigned to day watch in the patrol division. Thank you and keep up the good work, Nate. Officer Michael Schmitz started his career here in January, on January 2nd, 2001. During his tenure, he performed the roles of police officer, investigator, and canine handler. Mike is best known for the numerous canine demonstrations he performed in our community with Canines Ice from 2005 to 2011 and Ozzy from 2011 to 2019. Schmitz currently works day watch in the patrol division. Thank you for your service. Sam Schmitke. Engineering Administrative Assistant heads up all phone calls to the Engineering Department and does this better than anyone. If Sam can't answer a question, she knows exactly who can, which is a wonderful and efficient service to our residents. Sam is a caring nature for those around her and does whatever she can to make, feel, make people feel welcome. She handles all Engineering Department mailings, archiving, payments, audit support, and prevailing wage compliance for all construction projects, to name a few of Sam's day-to-day -day responsibilities. Sam's institutional knowledge of the city is valued and allows us to accomplish more as an engineering department. Thanks to Sam for always lending a hand and making work a more pleasant place to come each day. Congratulations on your 20-year milestone. Come on up. The following employees are celebrating 25 years of service in Hastings. Got 
went out of order. Since, ju since July of 1996, Corey Likes has been a staple in the Parks and Recreation Department. Corey spent the first part of his career as a parks keeper completing all of the varied maintenance tasks. For over 10 years now, Corey has served as the maintenance and operations supervisor for the Parks Department, and his years as a parks keeper have helped him to be successful in, his, in this role. Not only does Corey know the ins and outs of every park and every mile of trail, every playground and every facility in the city, he knows just about everyone in town too. <laughs> this combined knowledge has served him and the department very well when faced with unique and very odd tasks as he always knows who to ask and how to get it done. Corey takes a great deal of pride in his work and the work his crew does on a daily basis and he cares deeply for this community. He always wants to get the job done the right way and enjoys seeing happy residents after a job well done. And to continue embarrassing him, because I turned the page and saw there was still a little text, I'm oh, sorry. Right here. That's right, yeah. <laughs> out, 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 outside of work, outside of work, Corey and his wife Lisa have four children and continue, and continue to enjoy watching their children grow. Corey enjoys playing in the woods, whether that is riding the wheeler, cutting trees and firewood, hunting for ducks and geese, or hunting deer. You can bet he is having a great time. Corey is a tremendous asset to the department and the city, and truly a pleasure to work with day in and day out. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. I'm going to use this photo twice because it looks like we missed one of our 25 year photos. Uh, Joe Burke. In his 25 years of service, Joe Burke has pretty much done it all from his start in the Parks Department to becoming the senior lead operator of Public Works. Joe plans daily work schedules for the crew and then works with the crews to get the jobs done. When it comes to snow plowing, he knows every street, alley, cul-de-sac, and parking lot that needs to, be, needs to be plowed. In the summer months, Joe shifts from snow plowing to maintaining all the asphalt in these same areas. Stormwater maintenance is also a big part of Joe's work in the summer. He ensures that the city ponding basins are flowing correctly and the lines coming in and out of them are in good working order. Farming is also in Joe's blood and he enjoys working the farm he grew up on just outside of town. Now back to the script. Uh, the following employees are celebrating 30 plus years with the city of Hastings. <clears throat> For 30 years, Greg Page has been an asset to the city. When you see the street sweeper out working, chances are Greg will be the operator. Greg has excelled at all street operations such as sweeping, patching, paving, stormwater, and catch basin repair. When the weather turns cold, Greg is a very accomplished, accomplished snowplow operator clearing the streets of snow while operating one of the city's two tandem axle plow trucks. In better weather, Greg can be found trimming boulevard trees for clearance so the plow trucks and, and sweepers along with garbage and delivery trucks don't come in contact with any low hanging branches. Greg has a passion for horses and traveling out west to ride them. If Greg could choose a second career, it would certainly be cowboy. <laughs> and last but not least, this employee represents the most with 35 years of service. In his 35 years of full-time employment with the city, Mark Shute has become a very well-known employee. Mark is also a native of Hastings and really cares about his city. During his time here, he has held many positions beginning in 1981 until 2001 as a part-time paid on call firefighter EMT. His full-time status began in December of 1986 as a utility operator where he learned all aspects of water and sewer operations. In 1990 he accepted a new role in the street department as a heavy equipment operator. Once in this role, Mark also added on the role of mechanic, making him the first city heavy equipment operator slash mechanic, which is a title he holds today. 
With all of his experience, Mark is often the go-to guy everyone looks to with questions or to get something done. Away from work, in the winter, Mark enjoys traveling to different ski resorts, both domestic and abroad, with his wife and friends. When summer hits, he can be found on the river water skiing. Together, these employees represent a total of 330 years of combined service to the city of Hastings. We are fortunate to have their knowledge, dedication, and continued service. Thank you to each of you. And if we could break the meeting for a little bit and have the milestone employees come up and uh, some photographs with the city council, please. If you could, that'd be wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Again, that's such a uh, great beginning of our last meeting of the year to... I'll be signing autographs Get in line. Oh, good humor. Love it. Okay, there are also several residents who have volunteered their time on citizen commissions. And we would like to recognize uh, a couple of those tonight that are going off of our commission. So John. Thank you, Mayor, City Council members. One important aspect that doesn't get a lot of attention is the service of our citizen commissioners. The work that the City Council does is aided by these individuals, meeting in, in parks and planning and economic development, historic preservation, many different fields, things that make this city unique. The work that they do behind the scenes typically deals with public hearings and the nitty gritty of what makes policy into action and makes our city a better place. The work of these commissions can only be completed by the dedication of individuals that are involved within them. Uh, tonight we, we, have, uh, we, we have two commissioners from two different commissions that are, are leaving us that uh, we would like to recognize that service. Uh, I've got uh, Dennis Piney here tonight. Uh, Dennis, come on up here. De Dennis has been with Hedra. Dennis currently is our Hedra president, uh, and you might ask, what is a Hedra? That's our economic development group. All of the work that we've been doing uh, with Hudson Manufacturing, with some of the riverfront renaissance, with some of the redevelopment of buildings, loan programs, industrial park, those type of things are done through our Hedra board. And Dennis has been on this commission for 12 years. Prior to that, Dennis served on our planning commission for six years as well. 
Uh, I, I've been able to serve with, with Dennis and been able to learn from his expertise of his Hastings roots here as well as his vision for development. Dennis is an architect by training and what he does is he likes to take, uh, take drawings of the city and, and try to make it a better place. When you take a look at what's happening down at the riverfront, what we've done over the last few years, Dennis was one of those first people that came forward, you know, almost 15, 20 years ago, said, hey, we gotta do something better down here. I, let me sketch some stuff out. And it kept going and going and eventually we, we have what we have today. It takes people like Dennis to have the ideas to come forward with that and the dedication that they have to serve within the community. So Dennis, I just wanted to thank you for your 12 years of service on Hedra and the service you had in Planning Commission. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. And officially, I have this award for you. I'm gonna take a picture here in a second. Okay. Uh, the other person I have to recognize tonight, unfortunately, cannot be here, and that is Emily King, one of our planning commissioners. The planning commission is involved with a lot of the land use applications that we have, things for new development, residential, commercial. They hold a lot of public hearings that come, and they do a lot of the background work prior to things coming to city council. Emily has been involved in the planning commission for about three, four years, and she's been a valuable member of that committee, being able to bring a, a youth insight into it, uh, experience in, in being a, a, a manager of a, uh, of a coffee shop. She gets to talk to a lot of people. That was always very insightful for some of the stuff she would bring forward. So I want to recognize uh, Emily for her years of service as well. <laughs> but if I could call you back down here again, now that you're comfortable, take a picture with Dennis here, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. All right, tonight we have with us uh, Commissioner Mike Slavic with Dakota County and he's going to give us an update on what's been going on for the last year or so. Welcome Mike. Well good evening Mayor, Council Member, City Staff, it's always uh, great to be here. This is actually my 15th last meeting of Hastings City Council in a row. So uh, six of those, of course, on the City Council in the last nine um, as a, your county commissioner. So I just wanted to go in and give you my annual update of just kind of what's been going on in uh, this year for uh, Dakota County. And I always like to start with the budget, mostly because I'm a numbers guy. So it's a, um, it's a We'll use the arrows. So just, you know, very much like the city of Hastings, we've uh, certainly had some of the uniqueness and the challenges of a, of a budget in uh, 2021. Uh, for our coming up year, we've been very blessed that our, our non-levy revenues have stabilized. The, the budget outlook at the state level is very positive with surpluses. We've uh, received a, a plethora of uh, federal funds um, with the ARPA and uh, uh, so those have been able to go and do that. We also haven't, uh, our labor negotiations were a year ago, so we were able to kind of not have to deal that for this year. Uh, so we're really kind of, uh, we have some challenges, of course, with that. One of those is what does the new normal look like for, for staff, for just society in general, once we eventually figure out what um, 
post-COVID life looks like, as well as, as many communities and many private employers. The uh, labor market is pretty tough, but the, um, and lastly, with inflation, we have a number of cost pressures that keep going up with that. So all of that being said, with that year, we were able to go in at our last board meeting last week, go in and approve a 0% levy um, for, uh, for 2022 uh, with that. So our budget, roughly $441 million uh, with that is an increase in our capital improvements. So we're still working on doing projects, uh, but the overall operating budget going down for the year. A um, little bit of a breakout of what that looks like. You've seen this pretty much every year who's been around just on, on where our, our money goes. And of course, we do receive a substantial amount of money from federal and state resources. About a third of our budget comes from the property tax payers of Dakota County, um, with about two thirds being staff and operations and about a third being the capital costs with that. Something of, of make note, so we are now in our, next year will be our fifth year of being debt free as a county. Uh, we've been able to go and work very closely to pay off all of our debt. Additionally with that, uh, we will now be going for the eighth year as the lowest per capita levy um, of any county levy in the state of Minnesota. And now for year number two, so 2021 is our first year of that, we are able to be the lowest tax rate of any county in the whole state of Minnesota. So we've been very fortunate that uh, we've been very aggressive on, on kind of our financial um, uh, stewardship and really making sure that we can use those dollars the best and been and we've had a lot of kind of a little bit of good luck and a whole lot of hard work and obviously uh, just as you've been working on your budget for the last year uh, it takes a lot of uh, team effort to be able to get there uh, with that this is just a, a chart here to show you a little bit what the median home value uh, it went up roughly ten eleven thousand dollars from uh, 2021 to 2022 of course your taxes are based on for next year's value so the med median home value went up roughly um, uh, ten eleven thousand dollars and in that if by chance that happens to be your home uh, you're going to see about a $1.74 reduction in your uh, county property taxes. So it all varies on depending on what your value is, obviously with medians. Some people lower will pay uh, less, and those who have a higher value will pay more. But uh, just to kind of keep a good steward of those tax dollars, that gives you a little perspective. One of our exciting things that happened in uh, 2021 is we opened up the SMART Center. That is the uh, Safety Mental Health Alternative um, Training Center. And with that... Uh, alternative response training center. And this is kind of a different way of doing soft skills with uh, public safety and law enforcement. And that has been a joint effort. It's partnership with um, all of our communities as well as the uh, state of Minnesota. So this is uh, the kind of soft skills um, with law enforcement and really kind of uh, particularly what we've been dealing with in, in our society in the last year and a half, just a, a different way of, the, of policing and really that extra training. It's really cool. They actually, uh, if, you're, if you go on the sheriff's website, uh, Facebook page today, they actually, it's a virtual training, so it's a big empty room, and then you put on the, uh, the headset in there and you can actually see, and it's a full living room in there, and you're trying to address uh, mental health issues and, and that. It's just a, uh, the next way of how technology is being done, and we're fortunate that we were able to receive some state funding and partnership to create a regional center for that. So that did open up this past fall. Um, another thing of a, just kind of exciting thing that's been happening um, is we did the, we are going to be reintroducing bison to Spring Lake Park Reserve next fall. So uh, you can see a map of what the park uh, areas look like, and those dotted areas will be um, prairie areas where we will have paddocks of uh, bison, starting with 13 that will come. And uh, this is part of an initiative that the uh, Minnesota State Lottery helped support and fund to go in and reintroduce bison, uh, which were natural to this area, um, back into Minnesota environment. So that is something next fall, stay tuned, you'll be able to go along the bike trail, the dotted area there, and be with the Mississippi River Greenway and, and check out uh, bison in our park system. That is also part of a greater plan for a um, park redevelopment. So uh, in 2020, Two and beyond, you're going to start seeing about a five plus million dollar upgrade and improvement to Shars Bluff and Spring Lake Park Reserve. Um, the last thing that I kind of wanted just to share a little bit about what's been going on, and that is um, just kind of our housing and homelessness. So some of this uh, council, we, we had a workshop prior, uh, so some will be a little bit of a repeat, but I think there's some components that I just wanted to share with you. Particularly, I know that as council and the mayor, you've received phone calls, as have I, about the homelessness population in 
Hastings, and we've kind of chatted a little bit about that as, as uh, county resources have really tried to uh, work with that population. Uh, this is just kind of a chart that I wanted to share with you with what we were doing. So in the last four years, Dakota County has quadrupled their investment in uh, homeless outreach and uh, homeless alternatives. So this is just kind of something to give some perspective in the uh, winter of 2020 where we were, we own a, uh, a shelter called Dakota Woodlands, which has 22 rooms. Those are for, that's a family homeless shelter. Uh, Hotel Connect is actually a partnership primarily driven by the Hastings area, which is a um, uh, individuals who are really, they're choosing to be uh, outdoors, but sometimes the weather gets a little bit um, uh, more than they can handle. We have these polar vortexes, and uh, so there's a set of five rooms that we've partnered with to go in and make them available with that. Additionally, um, I should say that we have typically had a uh, traveling shelter that has gone from church to church every two to three weeks, and with COVID, we could not run in something like that. So we've actually, when I say rooms, we've, we're actually renting hotel rooms. Um, and this is going, we have the funding set through 2022 to, uh, for our homeless population uh, to do 137 rooms total. So the other va values in there are just kind of throughout the process of what is available uh, with, with our, our housing. So right now we can say, and we won't always necessarily be able to do this, but as it stands right now, every individual who chooses to have a roof over their home or their head has been given the opportunity. Um, that does not, that's quite frankly is because of the funding that has come from the federal government to make that happen, from CARES Act, from uh, American Recovery Dollars. Uh, so right now we're, we're in a scenario where those who wish to and uh, do that, have that option. Um, just to say with you, so this ally part in there is actually, in addition to the rooms, they offer our homeless outreach. So um, you may have seen this, or those of you who I've chatted with um, since a lot of the attention was, was drawn to the population in Hastings has been that um, this is a, the homeless out, outreach group that works in partnership with Hastings Family Service to kind of do weekly checks with the, the population that is living in the area to uh, just make sure are their needs where they want to do, that they do have options and, and, and to work on that way. I wanna just kind of share that. Um, so as we've been really working on those options in that part in there, we will have, um, there's a conversation, a community conversation that is looking to happen in January regarding homelessness in Hastings. So we're, we're working with some of the local elected officials, county, uh, uh, partnering with Ally, who is the Homeless Outreach Connection, to actually do a community conversation in Hastings because we, uh, ha as was evident, a very generous community that wants to help and trying to find out what is the best way to go in and, uh, and serve a population in a, in a safe manner that hopefully gets results. I think, you know, we know that a person can't just have a roof over their head to be safe and stable. You know, oftentimes it's a mental health issue, it's a, a job employment issue, it's a um, child care and some of the, the family homelessness. So to be able to find a way to, to make our uh, population safe, stable, so that they ultimately can thrive is the ultimate goal and to figure out what the uh, best ways to do that. And my slide here is really kind of the next step where the investment. So I said that we quadrupled the investment in here. And, when we have individuals who are in our shelters, one of the problems where we were creating our bottleneck was Dakota Woodlands, which is our family homeless shelter. And with that, they would stay there and they would, weren't able to get out because there was no options for them to find housing, to find uh, something a little more permanent. And secondly, many times they needed additional services attached with them. So uh, one of the first things we did is we partnered and built um, a number of years ago was the partnership with um, Lincoln Place. That's the uh, one in the, the corner here that, uh, that is the um, youth homeless um, permanent housing. So that has services, but that is ages 18 to 26 years old. So they're couch hopping oftentimes, they're single. Those are all efficiency units that we have available. And those are using levy county dollars and social services to help cover some of those costs of, of trying to really make a person successful and thrive so that they can go and be on their own. The upper um, left-hand corner that would be is uh, Cahill Place. That is a partnership with Center City that was able to receive a number of state funds, private funds. Uh, that opened up last fall of 2020 uh, during COVID. And that is um, uh, individuals, that's all families, who currently were either on the street or in the Dakota Woodlands Family Shelter are able to move into uh, two, three, four, and four bedroom apartments. And uh, in there, and you actually, there's a social worker on site that's working on employment and mental health and childcare and, and many of the challenges with uh, 
uh, these individuals to be able to go and ultimately thrive. The average stay in, in both of these is about two to four years. So they're staying in, in, in there and as they cycle out, hope you have some that are a little su more successful than others may stay longer, but that, that cycle is able to continue to find success. So Center City is based out of uh, Duluth and, and we're looking actually with this great success of, of a second facility. About $700,000 of property taxes pays to do those social services on this building alone. And the last one you may have heard is um, when Harbor Shelter closed in Hastings, that was our, um, our youth shelter some homeless, some in situations where the home life just didn't make sense, uh, uh, and that facility closed in 2020. And that created a large gap, particularly in the Dakota and Washington County areas. So uh, Dakota County is now in the process of purchasing that building before you at the bottom, and that is going to be a, a shelter for youth uh, who are either home life issues or homeless. And uh, so that is uh, kind of the next step. That's the under 18 population that will go in there. There'll be 12 beds in that facility. Currently it's a group home and, and we'll be going in there. So I think as, as we have this conversation, because I know many of you uh, continue to have conversations on, on what we need to do, I just thought I'd take the opportunity with all of our great successes to be able to share a little bit on um, what the county is actually doing for uh, services related to the homeless population. and. Stay tuned for a community conversation coming up in the first quarter. And with that, um, as always, feel free to reach me at home, office, or email if you have any questions or concerns. And with that, Madam Mayor, I'm certainly open for any comments or questions. Thank you, Mike. Council, any questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. If not, I do know no. that, that that date has been set. It's Thursday, January 6th. It is. We're looking at some potential changing of that date. Oh, so, uh, okay. The, there's a couple conflicts with, with okay. other individuals, but the, the, yeah, there is a date of January 6th as of now, and they're looking okay. to uh, potentially change that uh, due to some other conflicts. I was, there was text messages going back today. So, okay. So with that, but thank you. otherwise, thank you. Wish you all a very good holiday season, and I uh, look forward to being back here when other issues are coming up or otherwise next December. Great. So thank Thanks, you much. Mike. Also with us tonight, we have with us uh, Julia Carlos, and she is with the um, Pleasant Hill Library right here in Hastings. Welcome, and thank you. Is it an HDMI? Yeah, what do you got there? HDMI, huh? Yeah. Good question. This, that, that doesn't, that's, that's not going to help. Mm-hmm. Well. It's. I don't think that we do. That's all right. This is something down here. Oops, caps lock. Uh, but I don't know how this. I go around the side of you there, too. Sure. Oh, okay. Thanks. Let's see if there's something No, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, Council members, uh, members of the public. My name is Julia Carlos. I'm the branch manager at the Pleasant Hill Library uh, here in Hastings. So the last time um, that I was here was uh, the meeting that was the day before the uh, was the last day of library service at the beginning of COVID. So um, a lot of things have changed since then. Um, after we closed in March of 2020, we quickly wanted to pivot our library services because just because the building was closed didn't mean that the need for our services disappeared. Uh, and in fact, it uh, kind of transformed and there were a lot of new needs. We quickly pivoted to uh, launching a curbside pickup service for requested materials uh, that was something we'd never done before, so we had to invent that kind of, we got you know some info from other library systems, but uh, kind of inventing that from scratch. We had started planning a books by mail service for folks who have a hard time getting to the library, and we were able to speed up that planning process and launch that service to send, uh, so 
Folks work with our staff to request books. They can either say specific titles or, you know, mysteries, please, and we'll get them some things sent to them. And then it includes, you know, a thing to send it back to us. We also invested a lot of our resources into digital materials and, of course, our ebooks and e audiobooks and other online content really skyrocketed in use. <clears throat> we also reimagined our summer program, Summer Discovery, to um, now you get a book just for signing up. Because the reason we do a summer program at the library is because we want children to continue to read and engage with learning over the summer. Um, it really helps them succeed when they go back to school in the fall. So we give them a book right away when they sign up. We inc that partnership included for us working with the, the Hastings schools where we distributed over uh, 2,400 books to students through um, going out on the bus routes with the meals that they were distributing. And that was really great. Um, we also, on the third slide, have uh, now we're starting to reintroduce, we've reintroduced a lot of the things that we were doing. Our study spaces and meeting rooms are open again for public bookings. Uh, those can be, the study rooms are just first come first serve. The meeting rooms can be booked through our website. Um, businesses can use those rooms. That was a change, recentish change. So as long as you're not doing like a sales thing. You can have a meeting. Um, we're hosting um, lots of homeowners associations, Girl Scouts, um, etc. So we've got the space and we'd love you to use it. Uh, we also have our iLab Makerspace reopened uh, so you can 3D print. You can scan your old family photos, convert your old VHS tapes, uh, family movies into digital video, uh, make a button, which is so for some reason, very entertaining and popular. Uh, but I mean, buttons are cool. So those are all coming back. Uh, we also introduced as a new item, uh, virtual court hearings. Since uh, when in-person was not really an option, we would loan someone a Chromebook, they'd have the Zoom link, they'd be able to use one of our study rooms and still attend their court hearing or whatever uh, other court interaction they were having. So that was a great, that's been a great, uh, partnership with the courts system. Um, on the fourth slide, I just wanted to give you, these are the top 10 checkouts. Uh, for those of you who can't see the list, we have some uh, anime series from the teen section. We have some kids series like Dogman and Paw Patrol um, and some adult titles like uh, Kristen Hanna's Four Wins. But we also have uh, something that was a brand new service that we started offering, um, which was using a CARE Act funds and some other funding sources to purchase Wi-Fi hotspots and uh, put together kits with a Chromebook and a hotspot. For We know that everybody doesn't have reliable internet at their home, or maybe their internet's okay, but when three people are trying to attend virtual school and somebody's trying to go to a work meeting, it's not enough. Uh, so. Those hotspot kits and are really making differences in people's lives that we hear about almost every time one is brought back. Uh, and it's really been very gratifying uh, to hear about. The Wi-Fi hotspot only has circulated over 925 times in the last about a year. And the Chromebook kits, we have fewer of those, but it's still over 750 checkouts. So that's a little bit about what we have been doing. Uh, on slide number five, we have um, a few things coming up in 2022. Uh, first off, in January, now that our budget, the county budget has been approved, we are officially dropping late fees on youth materials. So that is any teen or children's uh, book, DVD, those little launch pad tablet guys, uh, those will, there'll be no more late fees on those. We uh, are really dedicated to improving access for all library users. And there's a lot of children who, you know, they get to a point with fees where their cards are blocked and then they don't come back to the library. And that's just really, we, we want them to come back and use our services. So this will unblock a lot of cards for kids and, and their families. And we hope to see people coming back to the library for that. 
We'll also, um, on January 9th, resume our Sunday hours, at, and which will bring us back to our full pre-pandemic hours of service. And we'd love to see you there. Um, in February, the Hastings Reads annual uh, partnership program with the schools and many other organizations will uh, celebrate Native Voices with the, the Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully, which is um, a Reese's Book Club book pick too. So it's been uh, getting a lot of attention, so we're pretty excited to bring that author here to the Art Center in February. There's also a title uh, for middle schoolers, Indian No More, and a picture book called Fry Bread. I'd encourage you to check any or all of those out. Uh, the final thing, oh no, one more thing. The virtual intake appointments, this is another partnership with another county department. We've been working with uh, the Employment and Economic Assistance Department to set up virtual intake for their services where uh, an in-person appointment might not work for various reasons. Um, and we'll have a scanner, a dedicated scanner, and then they can do a Zoom meeting with their uh, the caseworker and get set up for those services. So we're, and we also, this past year, offered in the spring a vaccine clinic at the library. So it's, uh, I've been really excited during the last year and a half to be working with a bunch of county departments that we hadn't worked with before and just connecting, you know, and also other folks like, I never thought I would work with the food service folks from the school district, but they were great partners in, uh, we gave out summer meals at the library, they gave out our books. It was a great success for everyone. Uh, then finally on slide number six in 2022, we will be hosting at the end of the year, um, October 13th through December 12th, an exhibit called We Are Water. This exhibit will be at the library. Uh, it's created in partnership with a bunch of state agencies, the Pollution Control Agency, the Historical Society, the Department of Health, the uh, Department of Natural Resources, and the Department of Agriculture. It's funded by the National Endowment for Humanities and the Arts and Cultural Heritage Legacy Fund that we all voted on in 2008. Um, so we're really excited to, um, if you know somebody that's got a great story about water in this town, you know, Hastings River Town. We're really excited to talk about the science of water, the stories that people have around water, uh, and, and that exhibit will be customized to Hastings. Uh, and so we're working on that with um, the County Department of Natural Resources and uh, County Parks and the watershed. So it's another, um, we met with some folks from the city last week, so there's a, a lot of, relationships that we're creating and, and developing, and it's been really fun so far. And I mean, we still have a bunch of planning left to do. So I hope you'll come visit us. You'll all be invited to our opening ceremony on April 3rd, or August, October 13th, <laughs> next year. Um, so it's fun to have some things to look forward to. Uh, and if you have any questions, thank you so much for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Council Member Vaughn. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Julia. It's great to see you again. Um, does the county still have the mobile library? The, the bookmobile? Yeah, the bookmobile. You know, they retired that a number of years ago, um, but it is certainly something that we are thinking more, of, or maybe not, it wouldn't look like the bookmobile again, but we know, you know, with the Dakota County being, the southern half being fairly rural, or, or people just can't always make it to the library. So we are trying to go to more things and bring maybe a small selection of library, of books and other things. But yeah, the book, the bookmobile as it was is. That, that's what I'm requesting. I think is um, sometimes it's hard to even transportation in town. How do we get people mm -hmm. to the library? But I know Eric and uh, John were doing some pop-up events. I just wonder maybe we can get some books brought to our events or sure. staff to our events to help yeah. make it a little more accessible if it's yep. an option. But the bookmobile was fantastic back yes, then. Yes, it, it brings all the things with itself. Right. Um, Thank you. Sure thing. Any other? No? Okay. Julia, thank you. I hope we see you before December of next year. Yes. I, it's, <laughs> what was there to say, you know? Yes. So. Right? It wasn't in our control. Yeah. So. But happy to be back.
and see you all Great. today. Thank, Thank you. you. Council members, are there any corrections to the minutes from the workshop or the regular meeting on December 6th? Seeing none, they are approved. And comments for the, from the audience at this time for public com comments. We have options for comments to be mailed prior to the meeting and well as an interactive feature during the meeting. For the emailed comments, they have been forwarded to the City Council and their receipt is acknowledged. Please recognize that items discussed on the agenda tonight will not, well, I'm sorry, please recognize the items not on the agenda tonight will not be discussed um, this evening. For the live comments, there may be either through a Zoom link or in person. We ask that attendees either raise their hand in person up front and they can come to the podium, state their name, an address and on Zoom, a raised hand feature, and we will pull you in from the uh, Zoom lens. So anyone in the chambers would like to speak to the council at this time? Okay, anyone on Zoom? And no one on Zoom. Okay, council, are there any council items to be considered? Okay, council, I would accept a motion to con approve the consent agenda. Council Member Lund? Councilmember Brox, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same statement. And they are, that is approved. Uh, tonight we have a public hearing uh, for the adjustment of city fees. And for this item we have an introduction by City Administrator Dan Waticha followed by a public hearing and a potential action for City Council. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this is a, a follow through on the budget uh, actions that the Council took at the last meeting, December 6th, uh, but uh, because fees are done by ordinance, there is a public hearing requirement as well as two readings, and that's what's before you this evening. Uh, to quickly review them, uh, the most notable uh, of the fees, I believe, are in the city utilities, water, sewer, and stormwater. Uh, those are, are going to touch every one of our, our residents and businesses. Um, uh, this is following through on a uh, utility rate study that we had done with Ellers uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, which uh, recognized that uh, a couple years previous we had, we had uh, a fairly significant increase, uh, but what this uh, rate study was trying to do was looking forward uh, over uh, a decade or longer, uh, uh, identifying uh, large projects that we might have coming up, uh, how those would be funded, uh, and looking at putting in place a consistent rate structure. So uh, although it's proposing an increase of 3.5% on water, 1% on sewer, and 4% on stormwater, the thought is that uh, 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 having that as an annual increase uh, avoids sort of the boom and bust of you know 20 or plus, 20 or more percent in, in a year and 0% in others. So it's really trying to get that consistency. Uh, other fees that are uh, proposed to increase uh, our, uh, in our ambulance runs, our ambulance service fees, which currently we actually have two fees, uh, resident and non-resident rates. Uh, the proposal is to combine those into just a single rate. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, fire fees that are, are covering costs. Uh, so when we do uh, safety inspections or fire extinguisher training, uh, basically a fee to cover staff or consumable expenses associated with those. Uh, we have a couple of fees in the Parks Department, uh, uh, or categories of fees in the Parks Department uh, at the Aquatic Center, as well as at the Ice Arena. Uh, in both of those cases, uh, um, although there's an increase, it, has a, it balances with a corresponding uh, um, counterpart in, on the expense side. So really those are needed to balance the budget as uh, staff and, and other costs increase um, uh, from an inflationary standpoint. Uh, the other fee that's uh, in the, uh, the list this evening are related to water meters, uh, particularly in new construction. Uh, we've seen an increase 
cost for the meter itself. Um, so need to cover that uh, as well as putting in place a fee for uh, staff time uh, related to uh, installation of the remote reader for those meters. So again, it's covering uh, expenses uh, that are specific to that project. Uh, with that, I can take any questions or obviously we've also got the, the public hearing this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I think we'll open the public hearing first and then um, close and then we'll come back for discussion for council. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone in the audience that would like to speak? No one? And no one on Zoom. So at this time, I will close the public hearing and council discussion. If any. Okay. If no discussion, then council, I would look for a motion to adopt an ordinance of the City of Hastings, Minnesota, amending Chapter 34 of the Hastings City Code pertaining to fees and municipal services. Councilmember Vaughn. And Councilmember Lund is a second. Additional discussion, Council. Councilmember Vaughn. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this is for staff. I, I would ask that um, staff discuss fee increases because I think the reason we do fees, what I'm looking for is kind of a marketing plan to let the community know when we raise water fees, it still gives you as a resident to understand you can control that. And it's your, it, we're putting this on your plate to make sure you know, because uh, the water bills, I, I got a few phone calls about this. When you go to a second, the fourth level of our water, if you use too much, your bill will reflect it. And I just want staff to maybe get a little marketing plan, a communication plan that gets out to let the community know, keep an eye on this stuff because fees um, is up to you to kind of watch why we use fees is because you can control it a little bit. So mostly about the water bills, but I think it's good for communications to talk about fee increases to let the community know so they're not surprised. Example, at the aquatic park, that why, why did the fees come up so fast? So I would just ask staff to kind of put a communication plan together for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Vaughn. Councilmember Fulch. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to lend support to the comments that Councilmember Vaughn just made. Um, I, I agree full-heartedly that we oftentimes we miss that and so if we have the opportunity to place um, some information within the city's newsletter on Facebook things of that nature to help just get the word out as to you know why those increases are, are happening um, I think that would be very helpful thanks thank you councilmember Fulch additional discussion okay there is a motion on the table and all those in favor of the motion state by saying aye Aye. Those opposed state by saying nay, and that motion prevails. Okay, tonight we have Dan will continue with the resolution for acceptance and appreciation of a do donation from Tecla Carpen. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is really exciting. Um, uh, we were approached a couple of years ago uh, by Tecla Carpen's estate about a sizable uh, quarter, quarter million dollar bequest uh, to the city um, intended to be towards uh, conservation and management of, of natural resources within uh, either the Mississippi and or uh, Vermilion River uh, watersheds. Um, initially, uh, we, we looked at and, and talked with the uh, executor uh, which sounded like a good project. We initially looked at uh, purchasing some additional land uh, next to the River Flats Park area, uh, Lake Rebecca Park area, um, expand that natural area, keep it in uh, passive recreational form. Uh, it's uh, uh, below the bluff where her uh, Tecla's home would have overlooked it, uh, so it seemed very fitting. Uh, uh, in talking with the uh, owners of that property, uh, Flint Hills Resources, uh, actually led towards the, working towards they're just donating the land. So we, we, we didn't have to spend uh, the, the bequest in order to make that purchase. Uh, we certainly have uh, noted it as uh, potential matching dollars on our uh, uh, state grant request for Lake Rebecca Park. Uh, that uh, state process is very slow and cumbersome and do not know uh, how that will play out. 
uh, but uh, uh, possibility uh, working there or uh, other other um, uh, conservation enhancements uh, in either of the two uh, river sheds. Uh, we're extremely grateful for uh, $260,000 donation. Uh, the uh, uses certainly will be um, in keeping with the uh, Tecla Carpens intent. Um, but with that, uh, I can answer a question or two, but uh, really I think it's a resolution of uh, appreciation. Thank you, Dan. Any questions, Council? Okay, then I accept a motion to approve a resolution expressing acceptance of and appreciation of a donation of, to the Parks and Recs Department. Councilmember Fox. And Councilmember Leifeld. Any additional discussion, Council? All those in state by, in favor of the motion, say it by saying aye. 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 Opposed, state by saying nay. And that motion prevails. Thank you. Tecla Carpen, and we hope to do you justice for your uh, donation. Uh, for this item, tonight we have Mayor and co City Council wages, and Dan, you may continue. Sure. Um, this is not an action item tonight, uh, but is carried onto the agenda because it's a, a carryover from our last meeting, December 6th. Uh, uh, last meeting, uh, council had called for a public hearing in order to consider this, uh, this ordinance. Uh, unfortunately, we missed the publication deadline. So uh, we were unable to have the public hearing scheduled, which means no action tonight. Uh, but in terms of transparency, felt it was still important to uh, keep the date and um, uh, provide the update. Um, there is additional information. Uh, Last meeting, there was uh, questions about the, uh, the data rather than just the final number. Uh, so that uh, information is in your uh, memo and packet. Um, but the other piece I think is really interesting is uh, in the meantime, in the last week, uh, we had interviews with the three uh, potential consultants for our compensation classification study for employees. Uh, and in talking with all three of them uh, just last week, they indicated that uh, uh, the, the mayor council uh, wage piece is really pretty straightforward and something that they could uh, include within the broader study without uh, providing an additional, without requiring an additional cost uh, for that, that study. Um, so, although it's uh, above and beyond what the initial request for proposals was, uh, they felt that they could include that. So, um, you, there's no action tonight. You certainly could call for a public hearing at a, an upcoming meeting uh, based on the conversations at our last meeting and that additional information from the consultants. I think really at this point it's probably a matter of uh, letting that study come forward uh, in April, May, thereabouts, and see how see what it comes up with for uh, any uh, comparisons on mayor and mayor and council wages. With that, I can take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Any questions, Council? Councilmember Fulch. Thank you, Your Honor. So, just for clarification, then, um, what are the next steps? Because um, it is on the table right now, or I shouldn't say it hasn't been tabled, but rather um, it was supposed to have been brought um, forward for a second hearing. But at the same time, you had just said that the consultant could incorporate it into the scope of work that um, they're going to be uh, conducting. And so, um, so what 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 is um, staff intending on doing at this point? Thank you. If the council is so inclined, uh, the uh, looking at the mayor and council wages could be included within the uh, broader uh, employee compensation classification study. Um, following the interviews that we did last week, anticipate that we will be uh, having a contract uh, for where one of them brought forward maybe as soon, hopefully as soon as January 3rd. Uh, it's a little bit tight around the holidays, but if not the 3rd, certainly uh, the next meeting, January 18th. Um, 
uh, which would have the contract to hire the consultant. Uh, do anticipate that there would need to be a budget amendment. Uh, the three proposals uh, all came in a little bit higher than what we had budgeted, um, but in order to, to move forward with, with the, uh, the study, um, depending on who we hire, the process might vary a little bit, but we've certainly talked with them about being able to start right away, uh, talked with them about the uh, communications plan they would have for working with uh, management team, uh, keeping employees uh, apprised of uh, what what is being done, uh, keeping the council uh, and administration committee uh, apprised of the, the process. Um, all of them indicated uh, they would be able to complete the study in about four months, give or take. Uh, one did uh, pause that uh, the timing there at May happens to be uh, timing of some other data that may be a desire for us to, to lengthen it out a little bit further to get new data that comes out at that time. But uh, certainly looking at all of them being fairly prompt and, and finishing up late spring, early summer and uh, look at implementing it at that point. Okay. Council Member Fulch. Great. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I would be very supportive of that pathway of incorporating the council into the scope of work that the consultant will be taking on and, and because, you know, I think that there needs to be further conversation, um, you know, from a policy perspective of the council as to what is the approach um, that the, that we want to collectively take in compensation, you know, is it, you know, do we, do we just want to be middle of the road, 50th percentile? Do we want to be um, more than that so that um, it, it's more competitive um, wages that are being provided uh, to staff. And so, um, so I, I just think that uh, it just, I think that there's more conversation that the, that the council needs to have um, collectively. And so I think that it, it nicely coaches into that, uh, that larger conversation. So thanks. Thank you, Council Member Fulch. All right, thank you, Dan. Council members, do you have any announcements? Okay, I have a few. Santa will be accompanying the Hastings Police Department as they drive through town in the decorated command vehicle following the addresses in the Show Us How You Shine holiday lights display. The parade will leave 6 p.m. from City Hall on Wednesday, December 22nd. Recycle your old lights with the Hastings Holiday Lights Drop-Off Collection and residents can drop off their unwanted light strands at the Joint Maintenance Facility at 920 10th Street West during the holiday season until February 1st. City offices will be closed Friday, Fe February, I'm sorry, December 24th and Friday, December 31st. Council and myself would like to wish everyone a happy and safe holiday season, and we're looking forward to 2022. With that, we will have meetings on Thursday, December 21st, 5 o'clock, Finance Committee, and the Heritage Preservation Commission meeting that day has been canceled. Monday, December 27th, 7 p.m., Planning Commission, Monday, January 3rd, 5.30, City Council Workshop, and 7 p.m. City Council regular meeting. Council, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Council Member Fulch, Council Member Lund, no discussion. All those in favor of adjourning, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed, state by saying nay. All right, we are adjourned.